Save the rents, and don't go red like. 
Think I'm now I'm found I, I was so, so, so blind But now, now Think I'm right now I can see Think I'm right now I was so blind But right now How And a special happy birthday to Pastor Clark. Come on, y'all. Yay! It's a happy day, right? It's a happy day. All right. Oh, happy day. When Jesus walked, he washed my sins away.
right, you can be seated. Well, happy birthday to you. Wow, 42 years um, old. That's so young, 42 years. But uh, happy birthday. Dr. Christopher is going to come read scripture. We're going to do things just a little different uh, this, this morning. And then, uh, how many brought banana pudding? <laughs> I, yeah. All right. Okay, we're good. We're good. Um, love you very much. I want you to pay really close attention to the reading of Scripture today. Um, this, is, uh, this is an exciting day for me. Uh, and, and you'll find out why, besides being 77 years old, I'm glad to be alive, but there's other things I'm excited about that God has done. We're glad to have you here if you're visiting with us. Mark will come later, but right now, Dr. Christopher is going to read scripture. <clears throat> Thank you for standing. We are going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. That comes right after 1 Corinthians. I'm on page 1452, chapter 3. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if in the ministration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing that we have such a great hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when the Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass of glory of the Lord are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Let's pray. Our great and gracious Father, please add your blessings to the reading of the word. Let our hearts not be troubled, for you have transformed them from stone to flesh, equipping them with every spiritual blessing needed from your sovereign hand, and we praise you for that. There are those among us who have not come to a saving faith, circumcised their hearts and put them on a path of imputed righteousness. From only you can a man be saved. Those that are here who have a relationship with you, strengthen their resolve, fortify their minds, and give them a spiritual boost to walk confidently with you, even though we are still here on earth. Thank you for the blessing of Grace Gospel Fellowship with strong pastoral leadership, gospel truth, and a hunger to bring more folks to Christ. To extinguish the lust of the flesh, to crush the evil spirit of pharmacia and addiction, to demolish the burden of mental depression and anxiety, to illuminate our hearts and souls and minds to the amazement to have Christ as our all in all. We have eternal victory and access to the Father. Come, Lord Jesus, save us from ourselves. 
wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall his praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free, for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches even me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than my sin and shame, O oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise his holy name. Bless Pastor as he preaches the gospel. Grant him many more years behind the pulpit. Bless the church and the mission. Praise team and elders. Bless the tithes and offerings. They may be used for your glory. Bless Grace Gospel Fellowship to flourish and grow, to be a light on the hill in Pontiac, a beacon of God's presence. Bless this nation by opening up our eyes and ears to you and only you, the author, perfecter, and finisher of our faith. For it is in the matchless name, above all names we pray, Christ Jesus, amen. Jesus Messiah, name above all names. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom for heaven, Jesus Messiah.
You guys can sit down. Good morning. Changing things up a little bit today. There's a lot of people here. Anybody here for the very first time? I know there is. Raise your hand. Nice. Thank you. Wow, over there. Back there. Sean, too. Very cool. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoy being here, enjoy our service. Uh, I know we already said it, but uh, you can uh, start that, Nick. It's somebody's birthday today, and we saw a lot of pictures when you walked in, but that's, how about that? They didn't see that one, did they? Look at that, yeah, yeah. All right, happy birthday, Pastor, right? And, and there he is in his most comfortable environment, right? Look at that, right? On stage. All right. Um, are we going to sing happy birthday to Pastor? Actually, we're going to sing it to happy birthday? All right. Then I'm going to leave that picture up, and we're going to sing happy birthday right now. All right, we'll stand up. Yeah, let's stand up for him. And I want to hear a good shout back. So I'm going to... with my hat. It happens every year. But I didn't expect the cake and candles and balloons. I love you all so much. Thank you. Okay. I don't know whether I have enough oxygen at 77 to blow the candles out. Oh. You did that on purpose. They did that on purpose. They Well, you had me fooled. <laughs> All right, well, that's great. Um, banana pudding. Oh, banana pudding, too. That's awesome. May I give you the hat back? <laughs> it's your birthday, too, right? It's Marilyn's birthday, too. <laughs> no, no. no. You might as well stay up and, here. And, uh, wow. You want to just stay up here? Uh, no. No, all right, go no. see I'll be back, though. Yeah, Thank you all so right. much. That's awful sweet of you. Does anybody think... You can, you can sit yeah, down, Yeah, you right? can sit down. I still got a whole slideshow to do. Man. Does anybody think you might see a picture of that in the slideshow next Sunday? Yeah. I think you will. All right, <clears throat> let's get back to a few things that happened. Uh, we got a lot of celebrating to do for the birthday of our church today, 42 years birthday. Uh, but a couple of things did happen that I want to throw in this slideshow too. And probably the coolest one is we had a wedding here uh, last week. Yep, Nick and Angela. Look at that. Look at that. Nice. That's a nice looking couple right there. So congratulations, you two guys. Um, it's how many do you think we've had this year? How many weddings here? A lot. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, still some to go. So very cool. All right, meal tickets. You've heard me talk. I'm going to keep talking about this every church service. We're still trying to find a really good way to do this meal ticket. So today, what we're going to do, being it's a little long right here, after church, 
they're going to be back at the coffee bar. Kyle will be back there at the coffee bar. We don't have change today. Meal tickets are $2.17. But whatever you have, if you want a meal ticket, whatever you have to offer today, grab one from Kyle. It'll all go towards the meal fund. And if you want, Kyle has a whole stack of tickets. There are some markers back there. Write your name, leave it, and we'll hang it up in the mission. So your name will be up there too. So if you ever come over to the mission or anybody that tours, we'll see your name on a meal ticket over at the mission. So whatever you can leave today is great. Grab a meal ticket on your way out. Fill it out, leave it there, and we'll hang it up. All right? Now, meal tickets. We have, if you were here for a while, you remember last year, Sophia and I um, had a little uh, duel going on that. Who won that? I can't remember. Me? You. Oh, all right. Well, whatever. <clears throat> so, uh, we're going to do the same thing this year. And uh, somebody's already made a little video. Somebody got a jump start on us. So, we're going to watch this. About 30 My seconds. Name's Sam, and I'm selling meal tickets for Grace and Years of Hope. This is what each meal ticket looks like, and each of them costs $2.17. Enough money to, con to give a meal to the women, children, and men in the program. To help me contribute meals to the, to the women, children, and men in Grace and of Hope, please go to the link down below. Thank you. That's, uh, that's very cool. The coolest part of that is to realize it doesn't matter how old, how young you are, what you do. If, if you're motivated, if you're driven, um, you can help. You can, you can somehow pitch in and play a role. So you can take meal tickets. You can call parents. Um, if you're in the program, or after, aftercare, independent living, sell them. I mean, somebody ask your case manager, ask Jessica or Cody asked me, somebody will let you know how you can sell meal tickets. It's a big deal. We raise a lot of money that way. And uh, like I said last week, nobody, it would be terrible to have to turn somebody away from here just because we had no food or no money for food. So keep that in mind. All right. Thank you, Sam. We're going to do a little quick tour uh, of the history of the 42 years of Grace Gospel Fellowship. Last year we did this as an extended version. This year I'm going to I'm going to kind of wing through it. So that's where the very first meeting was of Grace Gospel Fellowship at the Jump Family House. This is in 1979. Look at that. There's Pastor Pam. There are two girls. Look at that mustache. Ooh. Nope. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to let that be. And look at, here's the kids that were in the house that day. And what's cool about this is if you've ever had to set anything up with a pastor or had an appointment or came into his office, you'll recognize the little kid all the way on the left over there. That's his secretary, Tracy. Uh, so yeah, as a kid, I can't figure out still if this is 42 years ago and she tells me she's 38. <clears throat> There's something not making any sense right now, and I'm going to talk to her about that. So, yep. Uh, all right. Then they jumped to uh, Schwarzkopf Elementary School. That's where church used to be held. This is the, the chronological progression here. They used to have it there. And there's the first Christmas, and that's at the elementary school. And look at Pastor's got the toothpick in his mouth, even back then. See that? Yep. And there he is with it. Look at all the kids. That's awesome. And then they moved to Metropolitan Baptist Church. And there's a service there. See his name up on the board. All right. And then uh, Jeanette Junior High. They moved over there. Still searching. Pastor still praying for his own church, his own building where he could have his spot. And then this is the chapel over at the men's mission next door. Uh, that's where church used to be. So for a lot of you have never seen that. There's the chapel and a church service being held there. And then they got 210 North Perry. Now, this is before it's the Women's Center. And you've heard his story about how he got that building. So that's where church moved to. And this is what it looked like in there when they'd have church service. What else is really cool that happened in that building? If you see the picture on the lower right, that's uh, Rick Hermanson. That picture is actually from him. He was the first one to go from homelessness to home ownership. That's him signing his papers. Yeah, it's very cool. 
Yep, he was the first one, and that's him signing that right there. Happened in that building. There's a church there. That's what it, that, so for you ladies who live down there, that's what that building used to look like. That was the, our chapel, yep. And then on Mother's Day of 2008, Pastor Clark rented out Clutch Cargos, which is this building right here as a nightclub. Rented it out. Uh, they tore down, you know, what did they have? Jello wrestling the night before or something crazy, right? Yeah, seriously. And uh, they tore that all down, got it all set up to have church service in here the next Sunday. Uh, little did he know, or maybe you did know, that a few years later this would be your building. Here's what this building looked like. Uh, many years ago, you can see, here's the cutout there, the pews. This is uh, when it was the old congregational church here in Pontiac. There's a couple pictures that you can see our church, our existing church, and then the old part being torn down when they widened M59. That's the original structure there, and that's it being torn down. And here's when we got it, when the Luther family bought it and gave pastor the deed. This is kind of what it looked like if you were never in here. You see on that lower left picture, all the windows blacked out. So, and there's the reconstruction. A lot of pink and purple. And there it is coming together. And there it is now, our new home. Amen. <laughs> And you still see Pastor in his favorite spot, shaking hands and thanking everybody for being here. You see that after every service. I had to throw that in there because I love that. I love to see him out there um, greeting everybody and thanking them for being here. Now, you can't talk about Grace Gospel Fellowship without mentioning the men of grace. And, uh, yeah, very cool. There aren't a whole lot of the original men of grace left the roster the lineup has changed a lot over the years so i've got a few different pictures yeah look at that it's a lot of guys and pastors told many stories about their journeys and the, the money they made that to bring into the church uh, there's Dwayne and joe you recognize those two guys right that's a little more current lineup there and look at that, look at Pastor, one of the boys, yeah, how about that, that's cool. Uh, the men of grace were a huge part of this place, um, and humanly there was uh, only one person that was more huge uh, in Pastor's life and in the journey here, and that was Miss Pam, so I got a few pictures of that. Miss Pam's like, next, next, click, click, get that out there. I've got a few pics over the years. Yeah, isn't that awesome? And then this one's from a couple years ago. Nice. So that's a little quick journey through uh, the history of Grace Gospel Fellowship, the people that played a role, the Luther family, Men of Grace, Pam, Pastor, and so, and so many more, you could never list them all. Um, but I wanted to make sure to show that. That way you know what we're celebrating. And then we talked about the meal tickets. Um, at, at the end of service, they will be in the back. Um, just stop by, grab one, throw your name on one. Doesn't matter what you have with you today. Just give what you can. All right, have a great Sunday. Have a great meal. Remember, as soon as service is done, we're going downstairs to all fellowship and have lunch together. All right, have a good rest of the day.
certainly our anthem here at Grace Gospel Fellowship, Amazing Grace.
God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a All right, you may be seated. Well, I want to say uh, happy birthday to Mary Ellen. Where are you? Right, here, oh, right there. She and I have birthdays today and, and to Marilyn as well. I want to acknowledge uh, those who were with us 42 years ago. If you were with us 42 years ago, please stand. Stand up back there, I see you. Yeah, Lin Linda Levins. Yeah, that was a quick stand up. Linda, you didn't stand. You're not that old? Oh. We have folks here who were with us that long ago and I'm thankful for them. Christine Johnson is going to come and sing my favorite song, one of my favorite songs. Um, let's give her a warm welcome. And I didn't ask her until this morning, so she's had lots of time to prepare. body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, oh, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, 
glory. Sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. Bought with the precious blood of Christ. Ooh, oh, ooh, oh, ooh, oh. fear and death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, oh Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man, could ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand until he returns or calls me home This, you did a great job on that song. So um, I just wanted to ask you a couple things, okay? Okay. Okay, so who do you work for? I work for you. I work ah. for Grace. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your job? Um, I'm the career and education coordinator. How about that? <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Your past, where were you, were you a part of the women's program? I was, I went through, I went through the women's program a couple of times. I did know that, <laughs> I did times. know that. Did it a couple times, it was real pain to miss Pam for a little bit. <laughs> but um, this last time, um, God just really got a hold of me, literally. Um, and I've been here for the past four years and it's just been the greatest, the most blessed time of my life. Ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you're married? I'm married to that handsome man right over there. there. <laughs> He's yeah. a happy man. I love you. Thank love you. You too. Thank you. Oh. I'm going to have you meet some other people. Uh, first of all, you know the houses down the street that we want, and we're giving a dollar a piece to raise the million that we need to buy all those houses and the Y building. Uh, the realtor's here, Bob Wan, my friend. We're glad to have you. Just stand up where they can see you. And we're glad to have him here. I believe God is, God is active. He's working this thing out. Um, I'm going to ask Kyle to come. I want, to, I want to introduce you to some people. Let me say this to you. 42 years ago or less, when we moved to Pontiac, when we brought, I don't know, about 30 of us really came over, uh, and we, we were the Prince Pauper Church. That's what I called it at that time. Um, I mean, just... Look at us, aren't we a mix of people? Um, but my goal was not to start another feeding trough for drug addicts, that was not my goal. My goal has always been this, first of all, to exalt Christ. And, 
and for folks to come to know him, and for the people who graduate from Grace Centers of Hope, or the members of this church. We, we turn this city upside down in a good way. You have uh, better neighborhoods, restored houses. You're feeding the hungry and taking care of people. Uh, but most of all, that when you get your life back, you come here and become a part of giving back. Now, I want, I want Kyle to, first of all, Kyle, I'll give you a mic, okay? That means you have 60 seconds. Uh, not really, but I know Kyle can talk. Um, and we got to be out of here by 4 o'clock. Don't leave. I was just kidding. We'll be out of here before then. Um, Kyle is our uh, new director over there. Tell them, tell them a little bit about uh, what, you, what you do now, and then call the, I want all the, all the, all his group to come up here. I want you to be on stage here, real quick. Yeah, come on, come on. I'm waiting on you. This is our new development team. You know what that means? That means they have to raise 7300000 in the next year. Not too much on them. But I, I, I love this team. Who's missing? Where'd Dorothy go? Come on up here, Dorothy. You can bring your baby. I want people to see you. And Jagger? Yeah. You could have brought your wife to be if you'd wanted to. She, she didn't want to come. Hmm? Yeah, where are they? Who else is on this development team? They don't look like they're all... Who? Where are you? She's coming. She's working the soundboard. Oh, she's, she's Angela. Yeah, she's back on the soundboard. Angela. Now, yeah. And she just got married last week, so we're, we're going to have you. Kyle, go ahead. You can say a word or two. Inter introduce them and what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, let's get another round of applause for Pastor's oh. 77th birthday. <laughs> I thought he was going to get cake on him when they dropped that cake. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is our new development team, and the development team is responsible for a lot of things, fundraising primarily. Um, and so we are very proud to serve on this team. It's had some really, really intelligent, professional uh, talented people over the years and and to be able to just walk in that shadow and uh, and be a part of the the new iteration of that team is an honor to us uh, and it's certainly an honor to me um, so without further ado uh, I'm Kyle I'm the director of development uh, this is Joe he is our multimedia coordinator he's in charge of creating the videos really he does a lot uh, this is Mark. You guys may know who he is. Yes. Uh, Mark is our director of donor relations. We have Jackie, who is the actually assistant director of development. <laughs> this is April. April is the special events coordinator. This is Dorothy. I'm still trying to figure out what Dorothy does. No, <laughs> she, is, does. she is the uh, donor relations manager. This is Jagger. You guys know Jagger. He is, wow, clearly the most popular person on the team. He is our volunteer coordinator. This is Dean. He is our social media coordinator. 
and Angela, who is the special events assistant to April, and she will also assist Jagger with volunteer stuff as well. Love you all. You can go sit down now. Yeah, you can go sit down. I, uh, it, would be an, it, would, it would interest you to see where they have come from, where God has brought them from, how their lives have changed, how they were being destroyed with, you know, what's out there. And to be where they are. Now, some of you may be going, that's the new development team. It is. And I guarantee you, they're going to be the best. And their lives have been totally changed. And I love them very much. And want all of you to know, we want to get behind them. $7.3 million is a lot to raise. A lot of our events they're in charge of, those events have to come off good. And uh, they're just a, a great bunch of folks, and I love them. And I'm behind them 100%. 100%. Just think where God has brought us from. What a ragtag group we are here in downtown Pontiac that God has brought together and the most miraculous things are happening. Um, God things. Things that wouldn't happen unless God was in control. I, I say to you quite often and I say to you this morning, these are not Kent Clark pull-offs. I am as amazed as you are that God brings a Mary to us. And God brings Bob here to service this morning. And the house down there on the corner burnt down. <laughs> and I didn't set the fire. I, I had nothing to do with the fire. But it's amazing to me how things um, work out and how God does. And I, I believe there's a lot more wonderful things that are going to happen. We're going to enjoy the meal here this afternoon. I hope you'll stay if you're visiting with us. I know I've missed somebody. Uh, it's not intentional. We're glad to have all of you. Let's look at the uh, third chapter of 2 Corinthians. And according to that clock, I have two minutes. <laughs> And I hope you can get this, because today, uh, with introducing our development team and others of you who've gone through the center, and now you're part, I mean, you're a part of Grace Church here and helping us raise the dollars that we need or working at the center. Um, I love you. and and. Thank God for you that you that He brought you to us. Um, yeah. Notice what the Apostle Paul says here in the third chapter of the Corinthian letter. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Do we need a recommendation? Paul is about to revisit Corinth. And by the way, Corinth was a Pontiac. It wasn't a nice place. It was a hell hole, literally. And um, the apostle preached the gospel there and established the Corinth, Corinthian church. They weren't a perfect church. I mean, look at what they did. There was a guy there that was married to his father's wife. And there was a, and they met to take the Lord's Supper on one particular occasion, and they all got drunk. Sounds like a New Testament church to me. A bunch of sinners. We mess up. There's nobody, by the way, just so you know, there's nobody in here, there's no perfect people in this church. If you're here and you're perfect, uh, 
there's some other places you need to attend because <laughs> this is not the place for you. This is a place for us mess ups. But God can take mess ups and do the most miraculous things. And that's what we've seen here. So Paul said, you know, it's not me. We don't need letters. I'm not Reverend Paul. I'm just plain Paul. That would be like me saying, I'm not Reverend Clark. I'm, I'm Kent. I, I like you to call me pastor, though. I'm okay with that. But I'm not a reverend. Reverend and holy is his name. This is not about me at all. This is about what God is doing in this place. Now, I want to read you something I bet you didn't know. Verse 2. You are our epistles. You're our letters of recommendation. People, uh, people ask me, what's going on over there? I, I say this. Well, let me ask Joe Atwell to tell you what's going on over here. He can tell you what's going on over here. I could ask some of you. You, you are my epistles. You can say this. See, God has done something on your inside. This is not an ordinary church. This is not a Catholic church, Methodist church, Baptist church. We, we don't claim that. We claim this, Christ is all. Christ is all. You are my epistles, our epistles, written in our hearts. We love you. There's a lot of love in this place. There's nothing more powerful than that, that we love one another. We're not pointing our fingers at one another. We know where we came from. We were brought out of darkness into light. And God's turned our lives around. And we've got it. You know what? You could ask Jose Feliciano. He's sitting right there. Hold up your hand, Jose. Right there. Probably 40 years ago, 30 years ago, he was down in Mexican town driving a truck. And he came across this hillbilly preacher on WMUZ. And somehow something happened. I know what happened. It was a God thing. He came all the way out to Sterling Heights, he and his wife, to, to hear me preach the gospel and was converted. Have you had an experience like that? <laughs> it's a God thing. What? are the chances of a guy in downtown Detroit in Mexican town hearing a hillbilly preacher from Lowe's, Kentucky on WMUZ and coming to know God. Well, I could ask the same thing about many of you. I could have you up here to tell your story. And it'll be an amazing story. How you were brought out of the crack house. How you were brought out of heroin addiction. How alcohol had destroyed your life, using it in excess. And, and God has set your feet on the solid rock, Christ Jesus, and something happened on your inside. When a person, I know this uh, to some of you, this may be a little strange, but when a person gets converted, when God does something, on your inside, it's not an outside thing. It's an inside thing. He does something on your inside. It's called the new birth. He borns you again. Because you were born the first time with a depraved nature. You didn't know God. And so God comes and finds you. Has God found you? And he's now, now listen to this. Say, well, Pastor Clark, we go hear Pastor Clark speak. Wait a minute, wait a minute. People ought to hear you speaking. And they do. You know what people say about this congregation? Can you believe? Can you believe what's happening over there with those people? 
I can because it's not me. It's a miracle of God. It's a God miracle. You see, many of us in days past, we've been a member of some church, Catholic church, Baptist church, Presbyterian church. And so people, when people say, are you a Christian? We don't answer them uh, the way we should. We should say, yes, I'm a Christian. We say, oh, I've been a Catholic for 40 years. That's not the question. And, and by the way, being a Baptist and just following the Baptist rules, you know, Baptists don't smoke or, or drink or, you know, chew or run with girls that do. Uh, we don't do those things. All of that is letter stuff, all of that. See, I'm not talking about what you don't do, and that makes you a good Christian. I'm talking about, have you had an encounter with the Spirit of Almighty God where He changed you from the inside out? And look at you now. Five years ago, you were shooting up. Five years ago, you know, you were on the streets. Five years ago, you were living in the back seat of a car. Or some of you, five years ago, you were in a dead church somewhere, dead in a hammer. You were going through all the, the letter. You know, Paul will say here in this, look at this. For as much as ye are, verse 3, manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, ministered by us. In other words, Paul said, you heard the gospel. You heard me preach the gospel. God, the Holy Spirit, used me in this way. But look what he says. Christ ministered by us, written not with ink. Have you got your little list of church rules of what you don't do? Now, I'm a Southern guy, and I can tell you the Baptists and the Catholic rules are just the difference between cow manure and horse manure. It's just, it's the, kind of the same stuff. It doesn't matter. I want to know what's in your heart. You have a love for people? You want to help people? You come to know Christ and your life has been changed? That's what Paul's talking about here. Look at this. He talks about the law. Not with ink, this is verse 3, but with the spirit of the living God. Not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. You're here today because you want to be here, not because you have to. You're not keeping some rules. Well, some of you have to be here, but not all of you. Some of you are here because you really want to be here. It might have been the banana pudding, I don't know. <laughs> but Paul says, it's not a, a rules thing. It's not a legal thing. It's not the Ten Commandments. By the way, what on earth are you thinking? You know this is true. There's not a person in here that has kept the Ten Commandments. Well, somebody ought to say amen, that's right. <laughs> If you raise your hand, I'm going to ask you to tell me what the Ten Commandments are. How many of you have them memorized? You don't have them memorized. You don't even know them, much less keep them. We're not saved by keeping the Ten Commandments. Do you understand the Old Testament wasn't written as a road to lead you to heaven? It was written to show you you are a sinner. And when you look at the Ten Commandments... You, you ought to be saying something like this, if you're honest. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ten times, uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're not Pharisaic here. You know what we're all about? We love Christ because he first loved us. And he's done something on our insides. And we want to be like him. And we want to serve one another. We want to help we want to change Pontiac. We want to see the neighborhoods change and come back. We want to see people come to know Christ and get off of drugs. Amen? We do. <clears throat> Paul in verse 5 said, 
not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. I know this. I don't know whether you know I know this. But out of all of you, I know this. This is a God thing. This is not a Kent thing happening here. I, I, I am a, a, a amazed at what happens here. And I'm kind of getting excited about what's about to happen too. I know there's some great things out there that God is going to do for us in this city. And we're going to be a tremendous instrument in this city because we are epistles of God. You know, people look at you and say, well, I knew her back when she was on the streets. Oh, 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 she's, she's over at Grace Centers of Hope? He, he is over at Grace Fellowship? Oh, I could point out so many of you in here and you'd say, thank God, Pastor, thank God. I'm not what I used to be. And so it's 11 minutes after 12. I'll read this real quick. I want you to, I want you to go out of here thinking this. Do you know why, when we were singing Amazing Grace and my chains fell off? Did you, did you feel your hair kind of stand up in the back? See, that's not legalistic feelings. That's, that's something in your heart that, that God is in this place and you're hearing the truth. And you don't wish you were somewhere else. I was glad when they said, let us go up to the house of God. I'm glad to be there. Somebody's phone's ringing. It might have been mine. Did I leave it? No, I don't think so. Look at verse 8. Here's what Paul says. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Ministration of the Spirit. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, you know, if you're just keeping rules, that can get awful boring. But if your spirit is high on Christ and you're excited, you know, you're sitting in the house of God and suddenly you have a spiritual rush. It's kind of like a hallelujah. hallelujah. It's a thank God. I'm glad to be here. This is not boring to me. Paul said, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For the, if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. So, well, what does that mean? That sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Here's what it means. When God gave his law on Mount Sinai to Moses, the law was written in rock by the finger of God. And it was glorious. It was glorious in this way. God had come down and met with Moses and gave his holy righteous law. And there was thunder and the earth was quaking and there was a lot of fear. And in fact, so much fear that Moses, the man of God, said, you know, let me get out of here. He wasn't enjoying that at all. It was a glorious ministration of the holiness of God. The law says God is holy. And by, let me give you this illustration. The Ten Commandments, there's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. They're holy and righteous. They're, they're God-given. It'd be like this. When you look into the mirror and see your face is dirty, you don't pick up a rock and blame the mirror and break the mirror. There's something wrong with that mirror. No, it shows you you have a dirty face. You know what the Ten Commandments show you? You're messed up. You need a Savior. You're a sinner. That's exactly what it says. You're a sinner and need a Savior. And that happens. So 
I remember, you've, some of you have heard me tell this story. When I was down in Danville, Kentucky, I was going to the church one day. I saw this storm. It began to get dark. I was in a 98 Oldsmobile. I mean, a heavy car. It began to get dark. Soon it got pitch dark. And I stopped on the highway because I couldn't see. Suddenly, that 98 Oldsmobile began to move sideways. Oh, it was glorious. I had to go home and change clothes later, but it was glorious. <laughs> it was glorious. I've never experienced anything. It blew me off the road, almost out in the field. And when the lights came on and the tornado passed, it had destroyed, I don't know, six houses. All the leaves were off the trees. But there I was alive. It was a glorious experience, but scary. <laughs> but scary. Now, that's what the law does. I want to read you this, and then we'll go home. And not go home. We'll go downstairs and get some banana pudding. This is Jeremiah. I want, you to, I want you to hear this. Remember, you're an epistle of God. Here's what God said. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. I made a covenant with them, but it was a conditional covenant. You don't, listen, you don't want God to make a conditional covenant with you. God says, if you do this, I'll do this. If you do this, I'll do this. The problem is not with God. The problem is you performing the condition of the covenant. You couldn't perform it. That's a law covenant. But this shall be the covenant that I make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. I will put my, my law in their inward parts where they want to do right. They want to do right. It's not a legalistic works thing. It's they want to live right. I, would, I, in my heart, I was thinking coming over here, I'm such a mess. But in my heart, my new heart that God's given me in the new birth, I would love to be perfect. I love right. Right's glorious. I will write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sin no more. You know, when God converts you, everything gets exciting. Church is no longer boring. Really, it isn't. If you can find the right church, you're glad to be there. It's much better than you, what you're going to see on the Lions game this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, you know who's coming to town, right? Yeah. That's not going to be too good for the Lions, I don't think. But honestly and truly, in God's house, there's exciting times and thrills. And let me say this. God says, I want to say this to every mom and dad here. God says that you are a letter. You are an epistle. You've been converted. You're an epistle. You know who's watching you? Junior. Your kids are watching you. Boy, I see a great falling away of children. Your children are watching you. They ought to be able to say this. One thing about mom and dad, they love God. And they were excited about being in God's house. And they didn't send us, 
They brought us to Sunday school. They, they brought us to God's house. They live before us in such a way. Live before your kids where your kids say, I know this. I, I, I don't think I know God yet, but I'm sure mom and dad did. That's the greatest thing your kids could say about you. That you know God and that you're happy about it. Right, Mr. Fish? He said that's true. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah, you can clap on that. Yeah. How good God is. And just think this. I, I add this in my notes. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. I, I guarantee you this. I am, I am a total mess, but I'm not going to hell. Because Jesus paid it all, all the debt I owe. He paid my sin debt. I don't owe anything to the justice of God. God's justice has been satisfied for me. I'm an epistle. And I want you to read me as being a, you know, our pastor was a, he was a happy guy. He actually believed he wasn't going to go to heaven, hell. Uh, and I want you to be an epistle. See, God didn't bring you here for you to sit. And this is your church. And so you come on Sunday morning and there's lots to do. Some of you are asking me about what you should do. Let me ask you this. What does God want you to do? And what gift has he given you? And how talented are you? You know you can count on this. If God's given you a gift, he gave it to you to use. Yeah. I, I believe that. I believe that every person here, you say, well, pastor, do you know what they were back in the day? I know what I was back in the day. But I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All right. I was thinking today about, uh, about my church life in the past. And, you know, I, I think this is true of most churches today. They try to scare the hell out of people. And that's no way. If you're doing it because you're afraid and you don't have to. Look, I love God. I, I, I love what's going on here. You look at this building you're sitting in. It was a gift to us. God gave it to us. This is a million dollar building here that God gave us. I, I'm not talking about to me. I'm talking about to us. And God sent Bob over and our Mary's here today, and we're glad to have them here. How awesome is that? That God sends people to bless us and to be used, and for us to get to know. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said, let us go up to the house of the Lord. Let's stand together. I'll keep talking, and you'll be thinking about that. <laughs> We're going to have the last song, and then I'm going to pray for the banana pudding. Thank God for it. And then I would like for you to let our visitors, uh, Bob, you're welcome to go, and some of you that are visiting with us, um, you, can, you can follow me after I lead in prayer. Uh, follow me. I'll lead you to the food. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's sing. One more thing real fast. Normally, we celebrate a pastor's birthday today. There's another birthday here this weekend. We do them on Wednesdays. I know, but he's never here on Wednesday. 
So we got to say a happy birthday out to our drummer right there, Duncan. Come on. All right. Happy birthday. Today your birthday. It's been a big, a big oh, part of awesome. the big part of the praise team, big part of the program. So thanks, Duncan. Happy birthday, pal. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, uh, we want you to stay. We really do. We've got lots of chicken and uh, just good things downstairs, and we want you to stay to eat with us. If you're visiting with us, we're delighted to have you here. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we are debtors to your grace and mercy. We owe so much. Thank you for delivering us, for giving us our sight back where we understand that we were sinners and without hope and that Christ came to save the ungodly and those without strength. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Continue to bless this place. We say thank you for all that you've done for Grace Centers of Hope and Grace Gospel Fellowship. What a mighty God you are. 
dismiss us and bless our fellowship uh, downstairs. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.